So today we're going to talk about change your thinking, change your life, which um, sounds really simple. It's a nice little catchphrase. And it is probably one of the most powerful things that we can do. And I think that sometimes we struggle in realizing that if we were to do it consciously, deliberately, how easy it is to change our life by doing that. So I don't know about all of you, I, I, I've been with that phrase um, for quite a while. And I still sometimes have to be reminded, did you think maybe this way? Even this morning I had a really good friend because I had talked to her about something and, and she said to me this morning, did you think maybe that you were thinking this way and that's why that happened? And I, you know, when people do that to me, I want to go, no, I'm different. That doesn't happen to me. And it, yeah, exactly. Oh, me too. It absolutely, in all of our lives, is a way we can shift. And when, we, when I first um, saw the talk title, I thought, well, it's the month of December, and people are in the festive spirit, and what does that have to do with the holidays? And, and so let's talk about the Jewish mystic for a minute. And what he was doing 2,000 plus years ago was, tr was he was a rebel rouser. He wanted to change the way people were perceiving themselves so they could create a better life for themselves. He was, um, I don't know if the first, probably not because I think there's other prophets before him. And yet he was there not for, I'm sorry if you're Christian, he was not there for the Christians because at that time in history they didn't exist. He was there for the Jewish population. He was there to talk to them about what if we looked at, perceived ourselves differently? What if we truly loved each other? How would that raise and praise us up and create a better world, not only for ourselves and for everyone? And so just to think about that as you enter this holiday spirit, regardless of what faith you come from. I was also reminded this week by a really good friend who came into my office and she said, we need to remind people that the wonderful thing about new thought, the wonderful thing about Genesis is, regardless of how you grew up, what faith you grew up in, you do not have to toss that out the window just because you come here. This is always meant to be a complement to what you believe. And I remember when I was in Santa Fe, I used to say that we had a lot of recovering Catholics in the room. Because my husband refers to himself as a recovering Catholic. Although he never had a bad experience, he just has no desire to be Catholic at this time in his life. And this wonderful, dear, dear friend of mine said, can I talk to you on Monday? And I said, sure. And she came up into my office and tears streaming down her face and she said, Please don't call us recovering Catholics. I'm not recovering. I love my faith. I love the ritual of my faith. She doesn't go to church there, but to honor the fact that she loved how she grew up and what that gave her. You know, she almost became a nun. So it meant a lot to her. And so, you know, just those little shifts that we can give each other. And so as I was preparing for today, I was reminded of a book called The Philistine Prophecy. Um, I liked the first book. Uh, the rest of them I thought were kind of okay. Did not like the movie at all, just so you know. I'm giving a book review and a movie review here right now. But in that, the first course of action is when you really want to work this, change your thinking, change your life. When you really decide, okay, uh, I want to be different now. What has to happen? You have to create a critical mass. You have to create a critical mass within yourself that says, I am tired of my life being the way it is. I am uncomfortable in my comfortableness of um, what is happening in my life or in the world. Critical mass can happen as literally a critical mass of people too. I'm just gonna talk about the consciousness of the individual. And so in that, there were tools on how do you change your critical mass? How do you change your thinking to change your life? 
And so I came up with some things that um, you could care about. You know, just start caring about. Because remember, if you tell your ego, I'm going to exercise every single day, your ego's going to go, well, you haven't exercised in 365, so I don't think anything's going to change tomorrow. So a willingness is to shift your language about how you want to be. And so if you start caring about something, it shifts the energy from I must do this. I must do this to change myself. I'm just going to care about myself. And when I start caring about myself, then I'll start changing the way I think about myself. If I change the way I think about myself, what's going to happen? I will change my life. And here's what I know to be true. Everybody may say, well, that's kind of selfish. If you change your life, then what good is that? It's a lot of good. Don't ever think that who you are doesn't ripple effect out into the world, regardless of what you do in your life, regardless of where you work, who your family is, who you are, you make a difference. That's why you're here. That's why you chose to do this earthly walk, because you make a difference. And so changing your thinking, changing your life may sound like it's very narcissistic, and it's not. Because the only person you can truly change is yourself. I can want all of you to change, and I can want it, and I can want it, and I can want it. And if you're not willing to do it, that's your decision. And so the person I can change is me. And then hopefully somebody will say, wow, she's got a pretty good life. I wonder how she does that. Why is she happy all the time? Is she just a Pollyanna? What is up with her? And to realize that if I, if I want to be like somebody, then, then you, know, you emulate, emulate what you want to be in the world. And then other people are attracted to that. And they're like, you give them permission to be the same way. Bernie gives us permission to be joyful and loud on Sunday mornings. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and that's important. It's as important to be joyous and loud and, and expressive as it is to go deep and be quiet. One isn't better than the other. Both are necessary. Both are necessary. So start caring about your own happiness. And what I mean by that is sometimes we allow people to be in our lives because we think they should be in our lives. We've got some kind of contract, some kind of agreement. I don't know, whatever words you want to put around it, this person is in my life and they make me miserable. And yet they're still in my life and I expect them to change. Now I can speak from past experiences. This is how I used to live my life. I would be in relationships because I knew I could change that person. And then they would be wonderful. Trust me, if they're not wonderful now, you're not going to make them wonderful. I'm not going to say they aren't going to be wonderful because anybody can change. You are not going to make them wonderful. And so if you're happy, because here's the other thing. I was, I was going to take this quiz on Facebook, and one of the questions was, um, what are you afraid of? And I thought, I'm, I'm really not afraid of too much cockroaches. Um, and that's a whole nother Sunday talk. Uh, and, and then it kind of dawned on me is, I really would like to leave the planet before my husband. And to really care about yourself and to be happy. It's not that I wouldn't miss him. Anything could happen to, bet, for, between Paul and I. There are no guarantees in relationships. And if you put a tag on somebody that they're going to make you happy or they're going to complete you, um, I had a good friend say one time, tell the universe the plans of your life and then watch them laugh. And so when you're happy, if the relationship ends, yes, there will be pain. Yes, there will be heartache. And what will happen is you'll rebound. You'll pick yourself up because you'll realize that regardless, you're still whole, complete, and perfect. 
And that's sometimes hard when we're in a relationship and it's really loving and it's the best we've ever had and, and all of the things we tell ourselves. And still, it's a gift. And you brought it to your life because of who you are. And so to remember that. And so start caring about your goals and your dreams. I have shared this before. There was a t-shirt that I saw in Hawaii that said, be yourself. Everybody else is taken. And, and what that really means is how many of us can, can look at, so for me, I could say, oh, I want to be Michael Beckwith. Well, I'm taller than Michael, just so you know, because um, I finally met him in person. I'm taller than Michael. We're of the different sexual origin. We come from a different race. And Michael's already Michael. And he does a really good job at it. Really good job at it. And so what I want to be is the best minister I can be. And I want to bring joy and love and delight and, and things available to this community. That's what I want to be. Because I want to be the best me. And so decide what your goals are and your dreams are and don't hang them or compare them to anybody else's goals or dreams because you don't know about their life. Their life may look perfect and maybe it is and maybe it's not. And so really care about your own goals and dreams. And it doesn't mean at the expense of others. It just means that um, Susie Lula I took a class with Susie Lula, and what she said was, when she started caring for herself, truly caring for herself, taking the timeouts that she needed, um, getting massages, doing you know, quiet time where her family was not allowed to interrupt her, is when she started to soar. Because she was saying to the universe, I'm important enough. You know, I am good enough. When we don't do self-care, what we're telling the universe is, there's somebody better out there and I'll take care of them first. And when I'm done taking care of all of you, you know, and it's not that we don't need to take care of each other, we absolutely do. However, to be the best um, caregiver that you can be, you should be at the very top of that list. The very top of that list. So how do you, you should care about, how do you invest your time? Every single day. Every single day. Look at how you invest your time. What are you doing day in and day out? And is it bringing you joy? Or is it bringing you stuckness? And so I look at that all the time in my life. Because I'm a little bit of a TV junkie. And what I realize is that I'm okay with that. It doesn't consume my life. I could tell you why my programs are better for the mind than your programs. Um, it doesn't matter, it's entertainment. And I separate it from not making it my reality. It is a way that, you know, I love sports. Absolutely love sports. And so I like to spend time watching football and soccer and basketball and you know I that's how my entertainment and so if it brings me joy I'm good with that if I'm doing it to numb myself out or to avoid personal relationships or to avoid being present then I might want to relook at why I'm spending so much time in front of the TV and so how do you invest your time start caring about that Start caring about that. How do you allow people to treat you? Now this is important. So start caring about how you allow other people to treat you. Because I see a lot of posts on Facebook that someone will say, why does this person treat me this way? And and you know, I have quit responding because my response is, because you allow it. 
If it's the same story that you're telling over and over and over again about a relationship, the relationship is working for you. And so is the story. And that's okay. Be present with that. Because what I know to be true is I was in uncomfortable, difficult, awful, if you will, relationships most of my life because they worked for me at that time in my life. And I was the biggest complainer about those relationships. I could put most of you to shame on how much I complained about my relationships. And to sit at a 10,000 foot level and look down and go, what was feeding me? I can find it. I know exactly why I put up with those relationships. Was it wrong? Not necessarily. It was part of my growth process. It was part of who I was. And so who do you allow into your life? How do you allow people to treat you? How do you treat yourself? And to start to really care about that. So it, it really does get back into that whole self-care thing. To look at your relationships and if, if people are unkind to you, then figure out why am I allowing this person in my relationship? And I will tell you that um, sometimes there is a, a valid reason because I've had this discussion with my husband. I don't know about you, his family drives him crazy. Crazy. And I will say, you could shift that. And it's his family. And so he's willing to put up with that because it's his family and he loves them regardless and so you have to look at every little piece of a relationship and decide is this okay and am I going to you know I shared my Thanksgiving experience when my son was here and what I realized he's my son and I love him and so the fact that he never asked me about this community or gee mom how'd you go from being this to a minister kind of broke my heart on one level and then on the other level it was like he's your son and you raised him as this person why would you expect him to be different so all I can do is show up different in the relationship and when I show up different then it's an opportunity for other people to show up differently and that's really important for us to get if you want somebody to change then look inside and figure out how can I be different. I kept my relationship with my son stuck because I told everybody about our relationship and how it didn't work and why it didn't work and you know and then one day it dawned on me. I'm holding us both captive. I'm gonna quit telling that story and within a month after I finally shifted how I thought about our relationship and loved him for who he was and it was okay and whatever, you know, case sera, sera, if you will, within 30 days, his girlfriend reached out to me and said, I understand you make killer fudge for Christmas. And that was the door opener. That was a year ago. And so progress, not perfection. And so to to learn to be kind to yourself and to care about yourself enough to look at everything and start here. To start here. When somebody says something to me, you know, to step back and go, huh, I wonder why I handed that person that script. Because the truth is, if I didn't hand it out to you, then you could say something to me and I'd be like, must not be talking to me. So we, we're playing this energetic game all the time. And we're going to play it full bore for the next two weeks and then onward. Christmas is the, or ho this holiday, because there's Hanukkah too. So Hanukkah, Christmas, Kwanzaa, it's an opportunity to, for families to come together enjoy and 
oh my gosh, it's an opportunity for family to come together. And so just to recognize you hold the key to making every relationship in your life different. You hold the key. Nobody else. You can decide, I'm going to be different. And I would advise you to decide that before you show up at a party. I'm, you know, don't go in thinking, oh, yay, party, and then think in the middle of it, I'm going to change who I am, because by then, probably not. Think about it before you go somewhere and decide, I'm going to show up different. And that may mean I'm going to show up and just witness my entire family or all my coworkers or all my friends. I'm not going to get sucked into the vortex of playing my part the way I used to play it. And what can happen is when you shift who you are, people can shift out of your life for periods of time that you may not understand or know for how long, especially in a family dynamic. So when you, the reason change your thinking, change your life isn't easy is because when you start to do that, things around you are going to start to shift. Your friends, your family, your coworkers, jobs, everything will start to shift. Because if you become not the same person, those around you that loved you the way you were, aren't going to be able to play with you any longer. And I have watched this happen in my own life. When I got clean and sober, I had somebody that I grew up with say to me, we can't be friends any longer. And I was like, seriously, I've known you my whole life. But she wasn't willing, and she thought evidently that I would want her to, she wasn't willing to shift her life. And she was right. In that moment, we couldn't have been friends. The gift she gave me was we couldn't have been friends because I wasn't strong enough to be around her while she was doing what she was doing. And so the gift she gave me was we can't be friends. Now, we are. She hasn't shifted. I have, and that's okay. It's not like we spend a lot of time together. But I can be around her now, and it doesn't matter. Does that make sense? And so people are going to shift out. You know, you have a role. You were born into a family. You have a role you play in that family. This is the hardest one. When you shift who you are in your family dynamic, when you really start caring about yourself to the point, I am willing to shift who I am in my family dynamic, some of your family may decide I'm not going to be in relationship with you any longer. And I share that from personal experience also. And what I realize is how sad for them because they don't get to see me as the best me. That I held such a place in their life as who I was that when I got healthy, it made them so uncomfortable that the relationship got severed. And, and with that one, trust me, I'm really good with, okay, that's your choice. Because I'm not going back. And to realize anything can change in a heartbeat. You know, because the relationship isn't there today does not mean the relationship will not be there tomorrow. So I invite you this month, this day, this week, the rest of your life, put that somewhere. Put it on your mirror. Put it on, some, put it on your cell phone so when you open up your cell phone, it says change your thinking, change your life. Put it somewhere so that you realize I hold the key and I'm not giving it to anybody. I hold the key to my happiness, to my joy, to my greatness in the world. And people may try and come and knock you down or say, no, you don't. And the truth is, hold on to the key and give them some love. Because remember, we're either coming from love or we are coming from that place of needing love. 
And when someone's coming at you, the stronger they're coming at you, the more love that they are wanting to experience. And so if you can step out of your ego and just go, I'll be that place of love. Think how we could change the world. Think how we could become that critical mass if each one of us decided, I am going to show up and be the very best me God put on this planet. And I will tell you right now, I think each one of us, each one of us, every one of us, everybody on the planet, we can step it up. Every single one of us. Until one of us can walk this planet as Jesus or Buddha or Gandhi or any other prophet or, or person who can hold that place of peace in the middle of chaos. When we can do that, we will shift this planet. So change your thinking, change your life. Let's pray. And so standing right here in this powerful presence of God, over us, around us, through us, as us, knowing that that is all there is. There is nothing else. Whatever is going on in our lives right now, let's raise and praise that until it is lifted to such a level that it either dissipates or it lifts us up on its wings. For we are here to raise our consciousness daily. That is why we have decided to walk this walk in this lifetime now. And so knowing that that powerful presence that is God is in me, in you, in all things everywhere. I just know right here and right now that shift happens when each one of us is willing to shift. And so I claim for myself and for each one of you and for all people everywhere and animals and, and living things everywhere, inanimate things. That kindness is the order of the day. That when we look out into the world, when we look in someone's eyes, eyes, instead of seeing the humanness, we see the spirit. And when we do that, how could we not look back in love? If God is looking at you, how can you not look back in love if God is speaking to you how can you not hear the words of love and so I invite each of us to step out of the human realm and practice being spiritual spiritual beings having human experiences and when we bring the spirit into that everything shifts and so I am so grateful to build on this with this community this very day knowing that each one of us holds that key to be the best God presence in form that we can possibly be to step up to be that in this world where we have always been needed always wanted always asked to shine brightly and now we're given an opportunity to practice, to walk our talk, to be what we wanna see in the world. And so I am so grateful, so grateful for this opportunity to allow myself in every moment of every day to change my thinking. For as I do that, I know that I shift and as I shift, I know that my life shifts around me and it is good because it is God. And so I give thanks for that. I turn these words over into that infinite place of beingness, that field of possibilities. And as I do so, I let go of all of my human attachment to what it should look like or feel like and allow the universe to resound a yes back to me and show me the way. 
I surrender, I let go, I let God, and together we say, and so it is, namaste.